Can you tell me different ways to return multiple parameters from a method? Yeah, I can tell. Uh, so uh, to return a multiple methods, A, you can have, uh, let's say you have a multiple properties that you want to return. You can encapsulate them into one class and return it from the method. So that is one way. Uh, second, you can have out and ref keyword to your parameters so that you can achieve, uh, get more than one values from that method. Um, third one is um, you can have a tuple. Tuple consists of multiple uh, uh, values so you can have a tuple uh, you can return a tuple from a method to uh, get more than one values and similarly you can also have a uh, array which will have a more than one values so this these are the different ways you can achieve uh, to you can use to get the multiple values from a method what are the interfaces in Cisha? Uh, interfaces are basically a blueprint of the classes. It's like a contract that every all the classes that are going to implement extended uh, will have to follow. Uh, so it's a yeah, it's a basically a blueprint for the classes which are going to extend it. So here is the code snippet that I'm sharing on screen. Which one is the correct way of defining interfaces and why? Uh, so first one has a property which is initialized to zero. So interfaces can't have properties. So first one is incorrect. Uh, second one is having a private uh, method. Again, access specifiers are not allowed in interfaces. So um, and third one has an implementation. So even implementation can't you can't have implementation. You can just have a signature which is abstract methods inside the interface. So I think all of them are incorrect. But why do you think interfaces can't have access specifiers? Don't you think it is important? Uh, yes, like I mentioned before, uh, interfaces are the contract that classes has to follow. So if we specify any access, if we give any access specifier to the methods inside the interface, then class will, classes or any entity which is implementing the class will not know what they have to follow. So basically contract has to be public so that classes can extend it. Uh, so that's the reason uh, interfaces doesn't have uh, access specifiers and which make completely sense. What is the importance of interfaces in C Sharp? Um, interfaces has huge importance in C Sharp. Uh, so, for example, interfaces can be used to achieve the multiple inheritance. Uh, so, multiple class inheritance is not allowed in C Sharp. So, using interfaces, you can achieve it. Um, second importance is extensibility. Uh, so, for example, you have a car and there are different uh, model of the car and all of them having, uh, all of them should have some basic functionality. So, um, we can create a base interface uh, which will define that what are the basic um, functionality that should be in every model of the car. So, and uh, whenever new model comes in, you can easily extend the base model, um, easily extend the interface. So, extensibility can be achieved very uh, easily with the help of interfaces. Um, Interfaces can also be used to create a loosely coupled architecture and provide the inversion of control. And uh, this is also helpful whenever you, you have to write down the unit test cases for your application. So you can just mock, mock the dependencies and uh, you know mock the behavior of the interfaces very easily. So yeah, these are the advantages of interfaces in Cisha. There are abstract classes in Cisha. How interfaces differs from abstract classes and when one should choose to use abstract class over interface? Yes. Uh, so abstract classes um, are like a normal classes only, but they cannot be instantiated. Uh, just like an interface, you can instantiate interface as well. But uh, abstract classes can have its own implementation as well. So you can have certain methods which has their implementation and at the same time you have some abstract methods within it. Um, you can write down all the functionality that you want just like the other classes. There is just one limitation that you can, cannot instantiate that, uh, that class and um, yeah you have to over and again whenever you create a new class which will over uh, which will be derived from the abstract class you will have to override the abstract methods so that is the basic difference between these two um, when one should go for 
which one abstract classes are basically used in the cases where we have a common functionality which we want to be accessed across all the classes that we are going to create out of it and uh, also we can have abstract methods which can be overrided uh, in each of them to achieve the individual functionality uh, in that cases abstract classes are the most suitable whereas uh, in case of interfaces interfaces are just like a contract that all your classes should follow. So if you don't have any implementation details, you don't have any uh, basic logic, then in that case, you can go for the interfaces. Uh, also in cases where you want to uh, achieve the multiple inheritance, you have more than one interfaces and you want to uh, create, create a new class from it, then you can go for the interfaces. What are the virtual methods in C-sharp and when one should use it? Uh, virtual methods are uh, the methods which can have uh, implementation and which can be uh, overrided into the derived class. Uh, again, it is not compulsory to, uh, to override it in your derived class, but you can derive it just in case if it is, it is required in future. And uh, when should we use it? So the same kind of requirement, for example, in the, in the let's say there are different version of your class and in the base version, you have a, a functionality for your um, functionality for your function and you're quite sure about the functionality. Uh, but in future, let's say that functionality changes, then you can create a new version and override its functionality. What is the difference between abstract method and virtual method? Uh, the basic difference between these two is uh, abstract methods cannot have the implementation details whereas uh, um, virtual methods can have implementation details. Uh, second difference is abstract method need, has to be overrided into the derived class. So abstract classes needs to be overrided into your derived class compulsory. Uh, this compulsion is not there for the virtual methods. You Based on your need, you can override them. If you don't choose to override, it will every time refer the implementation which is there in the base class. So these are the differences. What are the different types of collection in C-sharp? Um, there are different collections in Cisha, um, stack, queue, um, uh, list, dictionary. So these are the different collections. Can you tell me one real-time example where you can use stack? Uh, yes, I can try. Uh, so real-time example for uh, stack would be... Uh, Yes, uh, so there are different uh, text editors, right? And in all the text editor, if you see, we, whenever we do, um, we write a words and we delete them. There is an undo functionality. And whenever we uh, do undo, last deleted uh, word appears. So I think that's the best fit because uh, so stack has this kind of uh, behavior that whichever data you push first will go at the bottom and whichever data you pushed at the end will get popped first. So whenever we do undo, the last deleted text appears. So that is the undo functionality is something which I th think is the best suitable example for stack. Well explained. Do you know what is unit testing and why it is used? Uh, yes, I know. Uh, unit testing is basically a, a code that we write to test the code. So uh, let's say there is a function which has a responsibility of adding a two number and uh, it, it has multiple scenarios. So I can write down a unit test cases for that that uh, piece of function uh, and verify if that function is performing as per expectation. So there can be multiple scenarios for which you can test your code and you can write down the multiple unit test cases to test the functionality. Uh, when to use it? Uh, so for example, let's say you have a uh, code base, a huge code base and you have multiple scenarios in your application. Uh, there are multiple business scenarios in your application. In that case, uh, you should write down the unit test cases. So if let's say there is a developer which we came and uh, write the functionality and in future there are certain changes to the code. 
then in that case and if the other developer misses one of the scenario while doing the changes to the method uh, then unit test cases can remind him uh, that these functionality are breaking because of your change so for code maintainability unit test cases are very helpful how dependencies of interfaces are resolved in unit testing uh, there are different frameworks available there uh, for uh, resolving the dependencies. For example, uh, there is a mock framework which can be used to uh, mock the behavior of the interfaces and uh, you can achieve the unit testing of your code. Which frameworks are available for unit testing in market? Uh, no, there are different frameworks, uh, in unit X unit are there. Here is the last part of the interview, Shahista. I'm sharing a problem statement with you. Here you have to write down a program to swap two numbers. I'm not looking for the exact syntax, but you should be logically sound. Okay, um, so let me write the code. Can you explain why you are writing the code? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I am taking the variables a and b whose value will be 1 and 3 in the beginning. Um, then I'm having a swap uh, method to which I will be passing these two values. And then I'm writing down, I'm, um, I'm printing on console the value of A and value of B after the swap operation. So, okay, so before swap operation, we have to print the values and after swap, inside swap, we will uh, print values. So let's write down the method. Uh, I'm taking the third variable C, which will hold the value um, A and I'm immediately replacing the value of A with B. And then for the B, I am having the value of A inside the C variable. So here the value of C, sorry, inside B. Uh, and then I'm uh, printing the value of A and B after the swap operation. So let's run the code. So here are the values um, that are swapped between A and B. Can you write this program without using the third variable? Um, okay, let me think. Okay. So let's take a, a and assign the value, add the value of A and B and assign it back. Uh, so considering the values, it will be 4. Then uh, I will assign the value of uh, B as A minus B which will give me the value 1 which is the value of b and then assigning the value of a to a minus b again which will become 4 minus 1 uh, let's see the output yes here are the swap values excellent chance now i must say i'm quite impressed with the interview